This is our unit 12b in class review. First problem wants us to solve the equation by completing this square. To complete this square, we first have to add the 5 over. We get x squared plus 6x equals 5. We're now going to pick a value to add to both sides that allows us to complete the square on the left side. The value we're going to pick is half of this, half of the 6, squared. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, squared is 9. We add that to both sides to keep it balanced. Now the left side turns into x plus 3 squared, which will always be half of this value, so that's how we get half of 6 is 3, equals 14. From here we're going to take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 14. And then last we subtract 3, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 14 as our answer. Number two is going to follow the same order. Uh, we already have the negative 8 moved over. So the value we're going to add to both sides, we're going to take half of 10 and square it, which is 25. We now have x plus 5, quantity squared, because we took half of 10, equals 17. From taking the square root of both sides, we get x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 17 and then we subtract 5 to the other side and our answer is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 17. Number 3 asks us to use quadratic formula. Our values are a, b, and c here and quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we're going to have negative 3 plus or minus negative 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times 8, it's a negative 8 there, and that's over 2 times 4. We have negative 3 and then the 8 on the bottom. Inside it's a 9 from negative 3 squared. 4 times 4 times 8 is 128, but negative and negative it's going to make it positive. So then this becomes negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 137 over 8. I cannot reduce the square root of 137 into radical form, and so we can leave it as this, or we can write it as negative 3 eighths plus or minus the square root of 137 over 8. Number 4, to solve quadratic formula, we're first going to have to subtract the 20 over to the other side with everything else, and then we have A, B, and C. So we set it up, same as the one previous, we have negative, negative 3, then it's negative 3 squared, A is 2, C is negative 20, and that's over 2 times 2. So we have a positive 3 out in front, a 4 on the bottom. Inside a radical we have a 9, and then it's a negative, negative, so it would be a positive, 4 times 2 is 8, times 20 is 160, which now we have 3 plus or minus the square root of 169 over 4. We know 169 is the square root of 13. So we're going to have 3 plus 13 over 4, which is 16 over 4, or 4, and 3 minus 13 over 4, which is negative 10 over 4, or negative 5 over 2. So our two solutions are 4 and negative 5 over 2. For number 5, we can uh, choose <coughs> whatever method we would like. Let's, uh, let's look at complete the square. So I'm going to, no, you know what, I have a, a 3 here. I don't really want to take half of that and make a fraction, so I guess we'll go quadratic formula, a, b, and c here. Complete the square would work, it's just going to give us fractions and we don't want to necessarily have fractions if we can avoid them. Inside the square root we're going to have 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 over 2 times 1. So we got negative 3 plus or minus 9 minus 36, all of that over 2. We get negative 3 plus or minus negative 27 over 2. 27 since it's negative, it's going to have an i on the outside. And then 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, which means we can take a pair of 3's out and one is left over. So we arrive at this answer. Negative 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2, 
you could also write it as negative 3 over 2 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2, where it's in separate, separate values. For number 6, we have a ball is thrown into the air, it comes back down, we need to figure out when it hits the ground. Our equation is, our function is negative 16t squared plus 20t plus 6. We could set that equal to 0. I can divide out a 2 first. Let's do that to make things a little bit smaller. That's negative 8t squared plus 10t plus 3. And now we can factor it or we can look at using quadratic formula. Uh, complete the square probably would not be a good choice here. Let's use quadratic formula because it is a, a good backup, uh, consistent one we could go with. So we have a, b, and c. So we're going to say t equals negative 10 plus or minus 10 squared minus 4 times negative 8 times 3. And all of that is over 2 times negative 8. Inside the square root, it becomes 100 plus 96 over negative 16. This is now negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 196. The square root of 196, it is a perfect square. That turns out to be 14. So we're going to look at our two solutions. You could divide all these by 2, but let's just see what we get here. I got negative 10 plus 14 over negative 16. That's going to be a 4 over negative 16. So a negative 1 fourth, which is a solution, but that actually tells us over here when it's negative. We don't want that. So let's do negative 10 minus 14 over negative 16 which is negative 24 over negative 16, which comes out to be 3 over 2. So our answer, when does it hit the ground, would be 3 over 2 seconds. We could also identify that as 1.5 seconds as well. For number 7, we need to find the vertex. We're going to use the rule of x equals negative b over 2a. That's negative negative 6 over 2 times 2 gives us 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So that is the x value. We're now going to plug that into the function to get our y value. So that's 2 times 3 over 2 squared minus 6 times 3 over 2 minus 8. 3 over 2 squared becomes 9 fourths. And then we get 6 times 3 over 2. You can make this into a 3 by reducing, and then 3 times 3 is 9. So we have now what becomes 9 over 2 minus 9 minus 8. Well, together, I know these are negative 17 and positive 9 over 2. If we make these into decimals, negative 17 and 4.5, it comes out to be negative 12.5. You could also convert them to fractions and do 34 over 2 minus 9 over 2, which gives you 25 over 2. So our coordinate for our vertex is going to be 3 over 2, negative 25 over 2, or if you wrote it as a decimal, 1.5 and negative 12.5. For number 8, the first thing we're going to do is distribute this negative 3 into our terms. I have 4 minus 6i minus 9i plus 6. I then can combine my real numbers. 4 and 6 give me 10. Negative 6 and negative 9 is negative 15i. For number 9, first thing I'm going to do is multiply this 3 into something. Let's, uh, let's multiply it into the second last term. This becomes 9i minus 6, and that's times 4 minus 6i. I'm then going to multiply, treat them as binomials. 4 minus 6i, 9i minus 6. And so what I get here is negative 54i squared, which is going to become an i squared is negative 1. So that's going to become 54. I have a negative 24. 36i and 36i is 72i. The last thing I'm going to do is combine these two, and it gives me 30 plus 72i as my answer. For number 10, to simplify it, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by i. I get 4i minus 6i squared over 3i squared. 
gives me 4i. Now minus 6i squared becomes a positive 6 because i squared is negative 1. And this down here becomes a negative 3. So now to write it in the complex form, we're going to go 6 over negative 3, which is negative 2, and 4i over negative 3, which is minus 4 over 3i. For number 11, what type of model we have for the set, if I look, it adds 3 here for each time. If I'm always adding the same amount and it's a constant, we're going to call this a linear function because the slope here is 3. For the second set, it kind of went up 2.5, it went up 5, it went up 10, it went up 20. It looks like it was doubling each time. And it is, in fact, being multiplied by 2. When we are multiplying by 2 each time, that is our common ratio, and we call that an exponential function. For number 12, we need to write it in vertex form by completing the square. So I'm going to take x squared minus 10x, and this is what I'm going to complete the square with. So I'm going to take half of negative 10 squared, which is 25. Now, I'm not going to add it to the other side. What I'm going to do is if I add it to this side, I'm going to subtract it from the same side. So it kind of nets out to be 0. But what it now does is this first one becomes x minus 5 quantity squared minus 19. And now it's in vertex form. That's the process. Complete the square, but don't add to both sides. Just add and subtract from the same side. For number 13, we need to solve algebraically and by graphing. So I'm going to go x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals negative 3x plus 5 to solve algebraically. I'm going to add over a 3x to both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 5. So we get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. This is factorable, multiplies to negative 2, that adds to negative 1, becomes a negative 2 and a positive 1, which gives me x minus 2 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So that should be the solutions of the graph whenever we go on and graph and where they meet. So now you can graph the lines. So 3x plus 5, or 3x, negative 3x plus 5 starts up here at 5 as a y-intercept. It has a slope of negative 3, so it's going to go down this way. x squared minus 4x plus 3 is in standard form, so to find its axis of symmetry, we're going to go negative b over 2a, or negative negative 4 over 2 times 1, which comes out to be 2. So we know it's somewhere on the 2. We then plug the 2 into the equation which gives us 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3, or 4 minus 8 plus 3, which is negative 1. So at 2, negative 1 is the vertex. I know it opens up, so it's going to go in this direction. I also can see on this side, it goes up here. And I'm kind of off the graph, but I can see if these lines keep going, they would meet right here and it appears to be at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 are the two solutions. Graphing is a way to visually check it. Algebraically is going to be your more accurate solution. Now for number 14. I'm going to go negative 2x squared plus x plus 2 equals x. Subtract over the x and I get a 0. These are both gone. So what we can do from here is divide out a negative 2 and I get x squared minus 1. This is now gone, and I can factor x squared minus 1 to be x plus 1, x minus 1, which gives me two solutions of 1 and negative 1. So that tells me where they're going to meet. Now when you graph it, this is g of x goes to x, and I know they meet here at 1, and negative 1. Now this one doesn't come out to be very nice for a vertex and uh, if you do negative b over 2a it actually tells you at 1 fourth is your line of symmetry. But instead of going through and finding that, let's look at the more important details. If this is 2, I know that's my y-axis, so I y-intercept. So I know my vertex is going to be somewhere up here and it's going to go down on both sides and go through the points. 
So solutions at positive one, negative one.